Welcome back. This is the second challenge in the 2024 MECC season, looking at personal finance combined with Microsoft Excel. If you didn't check out the first video, go ahead and see that. It's in the links in the comments below. In this video, we're going to be looking at tracking savings, right? Say you have a specific goal you want to save for, like attending the 2024 MECC finals in Las Vegas, and you want to save for that over a certain period of time. How do you track that savings? How much you need to save every pay period, right? Using the take home pay we calculated in the last challenge and then tracking that savings to know that you're gonna meet your goal in time. So we're gonna look at that and we're also gonna look at how that happens if you put it into a bank account that's earning interest. So to tie to that finance side, we're gonna see how that interest can actually accumulate and assist in your savings goal in that way. So let's get right to the model. All right, in this model, we're starting again on the instructions tab. I do wanna highlight, you'll often see this enable content at the top where your macros have been disabled and we do want to enable them. So make sure you click that enable content. We're gonna move on from our general instructions over to our challenge. Now we already talked about the basics of the challenge that we're building a savings account. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at what our inputs are and what our questions are gonna be. So in this case, we have a current date, right? So pretend that's today, whatever that date happens to be, and then our goal date. So in this case, early December, when we're planning to have the finals of the MECC again in Las Vegas. We have a goal amount, $570. This is gonna be a dynamic parameter that changes. Uh, we don't yet have the costs figured out for the finals attendance, but we'll have that out to you before too long. Uh, we also have an annual interest rate. So this is some amount that you're gonna save, that you're gonna earn in your savings account if you put it at a typically high yield type savings account. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get there. As in our previous videos, you can reset parameters to make those change. All right, so let's get right into the questions. So we're gonna start out by structuring our model and to do so, we need to know how long we have for our savings goal. In this case, we wanna know how many days do we have between our goal date and our current date. And what many people don't realize about Excel is that these dates, even though they look like dates traditionally do, they're actually numbers. So if we set this just a value equal to it, Notice how I just set it equal to the, the parameter. Right now, it looks like a date. If I hit Control Shift tilde, it turns that into a number. So the number 45,343, well, that represents how many days have passed from January 1st, 1900, until in this case, February 21st, 2024. All right, so it's giving us a count of the total number of days, but it's a number we can now easily work with. Because if we want to know how many days are between today and our goal date, well, we can take our goal date minus today's date, and we see we have 284 days to reach our goal. All right. However, we're not necessarily going to be saving every day, right? You might save once a week, or in our previous case, we looked at bi-weekly take-home pay, so you're getting paid every two weeks. So let's calculate first how many weeks we have to deal with, but then also how many bi-weekly periods we're gonna have. So to get the number of weeks, well, you could just take the date divided by seven. And in this case, you get 40.57. And you know, that's, I guess, the true number of weeks, but we're really just interested in number of full weeks. So here's where an Excel function comes in handy. We can use the round function, right? So we can round. Uh, if we do use round, what it's gonna do, it's gonna round to the nearest integer. In this case, it's 40.57, so it would round up to 41. We want to know full weeks, so we always want it to round down. So in that case, what we can do is we can just wrap this. Right? I'm going to put a function around the calculation I've already done. of Round down. All right, so I have my number, so that's 40.57. Remember the calculation. And at the end, i got to tell it how many digits I want after the decimal point. In this case, I want an integer, so I want zero digits. And so we see that we have 40 weeks in this case. Now, how many two-week periods is that? Well, we can use a really similar formula. Let's just copy it down, right? Except we want to drag back up so we get our days. And instead of dividing by seven, we want to know how many two-week periods there are. And there are 14 days in two weeks, so we make that adjustment. And now we see we have 20 periods where we can actually save money throughout the year. 
So now we've determined how much time we have to save. Let's next figure out how much we need to save in each of those periods. In this case, we want to pay, save $690. That's what our input changed to when we, change, when we reset parameters. And we have 20 periods to do that. So assuming we're not earning interest, we're basically taking this money and putting it under the mattress, so to speak. Take our, we can just take our 690, divide by our number of periods of 20, and we see we need to save $34.50 each period to reach our goal. Now, if we start to earn interest, well, now we're going to have to build that in, and we're going to have to build a little bit more of a schedule to figure out how that's going to work. So let's actually build out this model, make sure we can see that this 3450 works and accumulates our total balance, and then we'll actually incorporate interest into it as well. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit to get some room to make this model. All right, so first let's define what we want to keep track of. So we want to keep track of what period we're in, probably our beginning balance of savings, our ending balance of savings. Let's actually make some room and maybe our additions, addition to savings. And we'll make that bold too, make everything nice and centered there. All right, so we've got what we're gonna track. We're gonna track what period we're in, what we start the period with, how much we save that period, and then what we end up with. And what we should see after 20 periods is that we've saved $690. So let's make sure that's all working. Uh, in this case, we have 20 periods to save. Now this model has been engineered, so it always is 20 periods. So when you click verify answers to make sure you see what's working, well, 20 is always gonna be the answer to this third question. Uh, if it's not 20, the model needs to be more dynamic and sized differently, and that's a little bit more advanced Excel topic that we'll leave for a, a later video. All right, so now we need to get our periods from one to 20. So the easiest way to do that is just type the numbers. One, two, three, four, and on and on. You could type all the numbers out to 20. It's going to take you a little bit of time to do that, though. Alternatively, Excel can recognize patterns. So if you highlight the first four here and kind of click on this little square at the bottom, we can drag down and it'll continue the sequence for us all the way out to 20. So that's a little more handy. There are lots of other ways to do this, though, as well. We can delete all of that and we can do one. And we know the next number can just be the previous number plus one. And now we can copy that down a ways, we didn't get all the way, and get down to 20 that way. Now, if you're using Excel 365, or at least one of the more recent Excel versions, you can also use the sequence function. All right, sequence is a really handy function. There's lots more capabilities to it than I'm showing you here, but this gives you the idea. It'll just create a number for you. In this case, you told it sequence 20, it gives you the numbers one through 20. And you'll see that this function, now as we go down, it's grayed out right up here in the formula bar, right? You see that it's grayed out. And what it's doing is it's spilling the values down into those lower cells. So the formula is really only here in B47, but the formula spills all the way down to B66. All right, so that's a spilled formula or a dynamic array. It's something, again, we'll see later throughout the year and we'll kind of introduce it as a more advanced Excel topic. All right, now we're gonna track our balances. Well, our beginning balance is just zero. And let's make that dollars. Control shift four is what did that. And our addition to savings. Well, we calculated that already. We're gonna add 3450 each month. And I'm gonna lock that with F4 because that value is not gonna move. And so when I drag down my formula, it'll also stay always referencing cell H37. Now our ending balance is just our beginning balance plus the additions to the savings. All right, so after one month, you start with zero, you add $34.50, and that's what you end up with. Now, if we're gonna model this for all 20 periods, the real adjustment we need to make is that the beginning balance in period two is just the ending balance in period one. All right, so we make that link, we then copy our formulas down, so I'm using Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste, and we see after the second month now, now we have $69 accumulated because we started with $34.50, we add $34.50 to it, we end up with $69. All right, so now I have those values. I'm gonna highlight down till I get to my 20th cell. And now I'm gonna use one other way of copying cells down, 
which is control D. All right, control D takes all those formulas, copies them down automatically for me, and I see that I do have $690 at the end of those 20 periods. So we verified the 690 we're trying to save. Well, here's what that looks like in a schedule over 20 periods. Now, we didn't really need to do this for this simple example without interest, but the beauty of doing this is we can now take this model we've built, we can copy it, and we can now adapt it for adding interest costs in, or interest earnings in this case. All right, so let's see how we're gonna do that. Before we do, we gotta figure out how much interest we're gonna earn, All right? So the rate that we have up here, 1.5%, well, that's an annual rate. So typically to get to kind of periodic rates, uh, there are a number of ways to do this that are, again, kind of a little more advanced. We're gonna keep it simple for right now. And we're just gonna assume it's a simple kind of APR, uh, annual percentage rate. And with APRs, the way we treat them is we just multiply or divide by the number of periods we have. So in this case, you have two weeks out of 52 in the year, so one out of 26. So if we wanna get the weekly rate, we can just take the annual rate divided by 26, all right? And that's the same as multiplying by the number of weeks we have, two weeks out of 52 weeks in the year, that'll give us the same answer. And we can again, verify answers to make sure we're still correct. All right, so now we got our interest that we're gonna earn every two weeks. Now, how's that gonna affect the model? Well, down here we have a beginning balance, and typically we're gonna think about earning interest on anything that we have in the bank at the beginning of the period. All right, you can think about this, that the bank is renting your money, right? You've lent them, in this case, zero dollars, so they're gonna pay you zero dollars of interest. However, in the second period, you know, they have $34.50 of your money. They're gonna pay you rent on that money of 0.06% for those two weeks. So we need to build in here, we need to add in a column, and here I'm just cutting and pasting those over to make some room, and we'll call this earned interest. So we make some room to calculate a new field. All right, so our earned interest, again, is gonna be whatever we have to start the period times the interest rate we calculated. All right, zero dollars the first period. And notice I just centered that up real quick. That's Alt-H-A-C. I definitely encourage you to learn shortcuts whenever you can. And then we're gonna go ahead and copy that down, Control D again, and we can see that the interest that we're earning, it's not a lot, but it's growing over time as we have a bigger balance in our account. So by the end, we're actually earning 38 cents on the $655 that we've saved so far. Again, not gonna change a huge amount how much we have to save in this context, but once you start thinking about longer horizons like saving for retirement and higher interest rates like investing in the stock market where you have a higher expected return, it can really add up and really substantially impact your total savings and really the, the amount you can save for retirement as an example. All right. Now, our model's not correct because all we've done so far is we've calculated the earned interest. We actually didn't add it into our balance yet, right? So we have to be really careful here to make sure we add any of our earned interest into our ending balance. And now we copy that down. So we've built out our model. Now we can actually look to make sure the model makes sense if I get out of the way. We can actually see that we accumulate a little bit more money doing it this way where we actually get interest every period. You know, we're getting... $693.79 versus 690. Like I said, not a huge amount of interest there, but it would make a difference in some bigger accounts. All right, so let's actually make sure our answers are right though by answering our last few questions up here. All right, so question six, what is your account balance, including interest now? That's why we needed the second schedule after two periods. So here we can just link to our model, our ending balance in the second period makes that 6902. After two savings periods, how much interest will we have earned? Well, let's just add up our first two periods, which really the first one's zero, so you really could just take the second period. But in this case, we add it up, we make sure we get our two cents. Next question, what if we, what's our total interest earned? Now, make sure we go to the next line, sum, and we'll get our total interest earned in this case. Now, if you're watching these, this keyboarding and wondering how to do that, we have a number of keyboarding challenges for the MECC, so check those out. You'll learn a lot more about how I'm accomplishing a lot of this fast movement around the spreadsheet. All 
right, we see that that makes sense. We got our 379 to match up. And now what is our total interest income divided by the amount we saved? Well, we earned $379. The total amount we saved, well, we could just sum up all of our additions to savings. Right, that's one way to do it. That would give us our answer. We could also just divide by our input parameter, right? We knew we were trying to save $690. That's what we did. We get the same answer either way. Now, notice that we are earning 1.5% in our account per year, but we've only earned 55 basis points or 0.55% of the, of the total interest of how much we saved. Now, why is that? There are a couple of reasons. First, we didn't save for a full year, so we didn't get the 1.5%. Also, when we started saving, we had very little saved. So that full 690 we saved, that wasn't done until the very end. So what we get is some kind of blended rate since we saved a little bit early on and with a lot of money toward down at the end and the average is that 0.55%. Now, is that good? So this is kind of like the last little personal finance bit. Right now in today's interest rate environment, no, that's not good. But there are lots of accounts out there, savings accounts even, that only offer 1.5%. If that's the case, what you need to do is reset your own parameters Right? In this case, when I reset parameters, we found a 4.4% interest rate. Uh, you know, I'm recording this in the middle of January. Current interest rates actually on my high yield account are about 4.4%. So if you're not getting that in your savings account, you should probably look at switching to a high yield savings account, usually from an online bank, and earn that higher amount in your savings. Because if we scroll down, you can actually see our savings goal is about the same, 670 versus 690. You know, now we've earned $11 of interest versus four before. And again, four versus $11, not a huge deal. But if you start saving substantially, that can be a really big deal over time. A 1% difference in what you earn for retirement can make almost a 30% difference in how much you've saved by the end of retirement, right? That's the difference between taking a really nice retirement, um, you know, buying a vacation home or having to scrimp and save a little bit during your retirement years. So 1% doesn't sound like a lot, but it's definitely something you should pay attention to. All right, so from an Excel perspective, we saw when we reset our parameters, we still got all our answers right. That's what you wanna make sure of. And you can verify this on the last tab for the results as well. All right, so in this model, we looked at you know, a couple Excel functions. We did round down, um, we saw sequence as well, and we saw kind of how to structure a model and to really reuse a model when we build it and make small adaptations. Those are all important modeling techniques to learn early on. We also learned a little about interest and accumulating interest in a savings account. So hopefully that'll inspire you to start saving for your own goal, whether that be joining us in Las Vegas in December or whatever it is that you're saving for in your life. Either way, good luck and we'll see you for the next challenge.